Uh, and Andrew David Hansen, I was the one with severe uh, birth defects, and I urge you to vote no on this tool. My name is Carol Duty. I'm the director of Pregnancy Support Group of Woodland. I represent over 2,000 supporters. I urge you to vote no on 775. Thanks. I'm Bethany Layton, a volunteer client advocate at Alternatives Pregnancy Center, and I urge you to vote no. I'm Julia Brosterhouse. I'm a registered nurse and nurse manager at Alternatives Pregnancy Center, and I urge you strongly to vote no. I'm Ashley Donald, the receptionist at Alternatives Pregnancy Center, and I urge you to vote no. Hi, I'm Brooke Odgers. I'm the office manager for New Life Pregnancy Center in Placer County, and I'm also the product of an unplanned teen pregnancy, and I urge you to vote no. Good morning. I'm Lori Jennings, pastor of Faith Legacy Church in Sacramento, and I urge you to vote no. My name is Tanya Flores, and I provide after-abortion care for Alternatives Pregnancy Center in Sacramento. I strongly urge you to vote no. Good morning. My name is Kimberly Castro, and I'm a very concerned citizen of California, and I urge you to please vote no on AB 775. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Jeanette Burrell, and I'm a client advocate with the Alternatives Pregnancy Center in Sacramento, and I urge you strongly to vote no on this measure. Thank you. I am Adam Heltzley, and I strongly urge you to vote no on AB 775. Good morning, I'm Debbie Jones, and I'm with the Compassion Pregnancy Center Medical Clinic in Monterey, California. I represent 2,500 supporters, and I urge you to vote no. David Jones, individual, urge you to vote no. April DiCarlo, RN, urging you to vote no. Trisha Lewis, Executive Director, New Life Pregnancy Center in Placer County, I urge you to vote no. Good morning, I'm Janet Niemeyer, the Executive Director of Caring for Women in Oroville, California, and I'm representing over 3,000 supporters, and I uh, appeal to you to please vote no. Dean Tarsi, and I'm a um, supporter of all these uh, pregnancy centers that uh, do uh, some loving and compassionate work, and also with uh, Alternative Pregnancy Center as, as a volunteer, I urge you to vote no. Thank you. My name is Shannon Hughes, and I urge you to vote no. Good morning. My name is Ann Axtell, RN, and I strongly urge you to vote no on this bill. My name is Chuck Hughes, and I strongly urge you to vote no. Dick Jones, environmental scientist, and I urge you to vote no. Thank you. I'm Ellen Ginoli. I've been a RN in California for 42 years. I'm a nursing instructor. I was formerly on the public health nursing staff for the state of California. I am from Shasta and Lassen County. I'm here for Catholic Advocacy Day, and I strongly oppose AB 775. Please vote no. My name is Kathy Peterson. I'm with New Life Pregnancy Resource Center, and I strongly urge you to vote no. Good morning, I'm Linda Powell, and please vote no on this bill. Good morning, I'm Sue DeBruin. I too am post a board of two times, and I work with New Life. And my, from myself and my husband, I, who Dr. Mark DeBruin, would wish you would deny this bill. Thank you. Samantha Torres Wright, I ask you to oppose bill AB 775. Good morning, I'm Linda Clift with the Pregnancy Resource Center of Tracy, and I urge a no vote. Hope Vega, I urge you to vote no. Skip Vega from Holy Family Church in Artesia, and I please ask you to vote no. Good morning, my name is Cindy England, and I'm, I'm on board with um, the Compassion Pregnancy Center in Monterey Bay. And I strongly urge you to vote no on AB 775. Good morning, James Smith. I urge you to vote no on AB 775. Thank you. My name is Laura Fagundes, and I strongly urge you to vote no on 775. 
Hi, I'm Judy Hewart for Pregnancy Counseling Services in Placerville, California, and I urge you to vote now. My name is Sharon Monsmith. I'm a labor and delivery registered nurse and a certified childbirth educator, and I urge you to vote no on this bill. Good morning. My name is Nancy Hansen, and I'm the executive director of the Center for Life Choices in Ukiah, representing over 1,100 donors and thousands of women who we have helped. I urge you to vote no on this bill. Hello, I'm Winona Hayes, a volunteer at the Center for Life Choices in Ukiah. I strongly oppose this bill, and I urge your, your vote, please, against it. Thank you. I'm Holly Verhalen, and I've nursed for 30 years, and I urge you to vote no on this bill. Carrie Peterson, Yuba City, please vote no. Annabelle Ward, please vote no. Hello, Lisa Shippelhoot, please vote no. Judy Lemke from West Sacramento, and I beg you to please vote no on this bill. Thank you. Ernie Lemke, World War II vet, I urge to vote no. Ann Foster, individual registered voter in Rancho Cordova, I urge a no vote. My name is Suzanne Motola. I'm a former director in Hawaii, but I have been residing in Chief California for six years. I urge you to vote no on this bill. Good morning. My name is Carolyn Dehart, post a board of woman. I urge you to vote no, please, on AB 775. Good morning. Bob Guild, Executive Director of Alternatives Pregnancy Center in, Calif in Sacramento. On behalf of our uh, supporters, I urge you to vote no. Jonathan Keller with California Family Council and California Family Alliance. I, I just wanted to thank Chairman Stone and Mr. Chu. I, I do appreciate your heart for women. Uh, however, as someone who did my Eagle Scout project for Alternatives Pregnancy you, Center 15 years ago, tell us whether you support. Please vote no or oppose the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Patricia Del Marmo. I am the Northern California Area Director for Concerned Women for America which is the largest women's organization in the nation. We have tw about 20,000 members for California. And I urge you to vote no. Thank you. And I have proof of the good stuff. <laughs> I'm Reverend Olga Herman, and with JC Research Center here in, California, in Sacramento, and I oppose AB 775. Thank you. Murray Lewis, tw 25, uh, 35 years pro-life uh, ministries, activist, and in opposition to this bill. Please vote no. My name is Charles Yarbrough. I'm the president of Arcade Roseville Science, Creation Science Clubs, and I urge everyone to vote no, and I oppose this bill. I'm Kate Murphy from Sacramento, and I strongly urge you to oppose this bill. Sandra Palacios with the California Catholic Conference, also in strong opposition to this bill. I'm Kathleen DeSantis, a private citizen, a Rachel's Vineyard um, supporter, and also opposed to a board of women, and I ask you to vote no. I'm Mike DeSantis, opposed to board of father. I urge you to vote no as do your dead taxpayers. Paula Leary, Executive Director, Pregnancy Medical Clinic in Lodi, and I strongly oppose this bill. Kathleen Moran, Board Member, Pregnancy Medical Clinic of Lodi, and I strongly urge you to oppose this bill. Thank you. I'm Joanne Westgate from Lodi, representing the PRC of Lodi, and I strongly oppose this bill. I'm Ralph Merletti, from a uh, member of St. Rose Parish, South Sacramento, and I strongly uh, urge a no vote on this very unfair bill. Lisa Smiley from Sacramento, please oppose this bill. Ruth Ann Cauley, 40 Days for Life, San Rafael, and I strongly oppose this bill. Mary Potler, Tiburon, California. I'm adopted. I strongly oppose this bill. 
Ingrid Gallagher from Marin Network for Life. I strongly oppose this bill. Dorinda Sears from Tiburon, California, member of Marin Network for Life, and I strongly oppose this very coercive bill. Sue Ann Garbarino from Yuba County, small business owner, strongly oppose this bill. I've seen many women helped by our crisis pregnancy center. Thank you. Walter Rilling, a citizen of the uh, United States, and I strongly oppose this bill. Dwayne Russell. Uh, from Yuba City, California, I, and a str as a strong supporter of the uh, the um, Women's Center in Yuba and Sutter Counties, I strongly oppose this bill. Judy Delgado from Placer County, I strongly oppose this bill on the grounds of constitutional rights and for the lives and savings of, of children, unborn or unborn. I'm Bridget Potter from Nevada County, and I strongly urge you to please vote no. <laughs> Sarah Wynn from Nevada County, pro-life supporter, and I urge you, please vote no. David Leatherby, local businessman, father of 10, great-grandfather to 31, grandfather to 30, please vote no. Bob Slakey, a private citizen, I urge you to vote no. Good morning. James Anderson, pastor in Yuba City, California, and I urgently urge you to vote no. Janelle Trevithan, member of the Board of Directors of a Woman's Friend Pregnancy Clinic in Marysville and a 25-year client advocate at a woman's friend, and I urge you to vote no on behalf of our over 5,000 supporters. Democrats, for once, just say no to your Planned Parenthood racist masters. Anyone else in opposition? Anyone else in opposition? All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the committee. Comments, questions from committee members? Mr. Gallagher? Yeah, a few questions. <clears throat> um, the first question is, you know, this is a judiciary committee, so we're very concerned about the law. And Mr. Chu, I know you, you yourself are a Harvard-educated lawyer, so you can guess that there are some constitutional issues um, uh, with this legislation. And um, probably most on point would be the Evergreen case that was uh, before the Second Circuit, um, where New York City had a similar type of uh, uh, requirement that these clinics have to post this information or have, have to provide certain information. And they found that, the court ultimately found that that was not narrowly tailored enough, um, that, the, that the government has the uh, has the authority they could do a citywide campaign uh, letting people know about low cost government programs that provide prenatal care um, and other health care for women so um, you know I think that case is pretty on point they found that's unconstitutional and in this particular case you know we're talking about a very small minority of clinics out there that are completely privately funded. Um, all the other clinics have government funding, and so we're saying to that minority that's completely privately funded, you need to tell about the majority of clinics who receive government funding and have a whole lot more advantages in terms of their funding than, than the privates do. Don't you see that there's going to be a pretty substantial First Amendment problem here? So first of all, let me, let me start by, I want to just take a moment and thank all the members of the public who have come out. Uh, there are certainly many heartfelt perspectives on both sides of this issue, and I very much respect the various perspectives that we have. And, and certainly, my guests, uh, Mr. Gallagher and I, uh, we may respectfully disagree on this, uh, particularly as we look at the constitutional issues, but just want to appreciate the conversation here. Uh, as I said in my opening comments, we certainly drafted this ordinance very narrowly. 
uh, understanding and anticipating that uh, there may be some who would challenge uh, us on constitutional grounds. It is our perspective uh, that this ordinance uh, really is professional speech or commercial speech uh, that would be governed by an intermediate constitutional scrutiny standard. And given the substantial government interest in ensuring that pregnant women are fully notified about their spectrum of health care options, we believe that it would be upheld in the courts. But that being said, Mr. Gallagher, since you are an attorney, uh, if and even if a court were to find that this is a law governed under a strict scrutiny standard, uh, we believe there is a compelling government interest in ensuring that pregnant women are fully notified about their spectrum of health care options. This is a narrowly tailored uh, bill. Uh, given the time-sensitive nature of how pregnancy affects decisions and options, and we have not really been able to discern an alternative that would achieve this compelling interest. And let me just also suggest that in the Evergreen case, the Second Circuit in New York uh, actually did uphold language very similar to what we're talking about here. Uh, and uh, if I may quote, uh, the Evergreen Court in New York said that the government has a compelling interest to ensure that women have prompt access to the type of care they seek and to prevent women from mistakenly concluding that pregnancy service centers, which look like medical facilities, are medical facilities, whether or not those centers engage in deception. And, and let me mention one other thing, which is NARAL, as you probably know, had a study where they found that 91% of the clinics that they sent individuals into uh, found that those clinics were providing information that suggested that abortions led to breast cancer, infertility, mental illness. Uh, we heard from Mr. Hadley representing the opposition. Uh, he suggested that, that oftentimes in these clinics there may be things said that shouldn't be said, and, and, and that's part of the challenge of what we're trying to do here. Um, we have narrowly tailored this to to, to require licensed facilities to provide a simple notice that there are a range of options, but we're not dictating what those options are. It is viewpoint neutral. I have a few other questions, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Um, well, one, again, in the Evergreen case, there was actually three parts of that that the city of New York did. First of all, they said that the, the clinic would have to say whether or not they had a licensed medical provider on staff. That was one. The second one is they wanted them to state the fact that the New York City Department of Health and Mental Health and Mental Hygiene encouraged potentially pregnant women to consult with a licensed provider. And the third portion, which we do not do here, right? And, That's and not the part third of this. portion was whether they provided referrals for abortion, emergency contraception, or prenatal care. The court upheld the first one only, which is a, a statement that the person, whether or not they have a licensed physician on which is not before us at all today. But actually, very, it, it very much is in front of us today. In fact, that is, uh, that is half of what our is Not on this about. provision that, we, that we're all talking about, because your notice does not say anything about a licensed provider. The notice says. Actually, Mr. Gallagher, uh, the notice uh, a says significant that, portion of our bill refers to unlicensed I, clinics. I understand that, but I'm saying the part that everyone is opposed to and that everybody's talking about is this notice where you're saying California has public programs that provide immediate free or low cost access to comprehensive family planning services, including all FDA approved methods of contraception, prenatal care, and abortion for eligible women. There's nothing in that statement that talks about a licensed physician. Um, so that's what we're talking about. That's the speech issue. And in the New York case, it was the, it was the latter two provisions that were struck down by the court as unconstitutional because they provided them to, to tell clients who came into the facility that New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene encouraged pregnant women to consult with a licensed provider. That was struck down. And we don't have that provision in this bill. And whether or not, and ask them to tell them whether or not they provided referrals for abortion, emergency contraception, or prenatal care. So I think that's very much on point here because what you're saying is that they have to provide a notice that hey, there's other facilities out there, government facilities that provide abortion. Um, that's going to be the specific issue that, you know, the specific issue that was basically struck down by the Second Circuit. So there's already a case, case law, federal case law on point that says you can't do this. I think that's a problem for us as the Judiciary Committee to go ahead and approve legislation that's going to be unconstitutional as soon as it was passed. And, and to be clear, Mr. Gallagher, and I think what Mr. Chu is getting at, 
because of those cases that are out there, the analysis, which I understand is long and, and fairly detailed, but it distinguishes between not the license of the physician, but a licensed facility versus an unlicensed facility. And the analysis addresses so, the constitutionality differently in each case because of the cases that were brought So that's where I was going to go next, because I, I believe you, and we've talked about this, when you say, look, this is about just providing the full range of options that, that women have the full information uh, and spectrum of care that is out there and available. So if that is the truth, would you take as a friendly amendment something that would require all primary care clinics to provide the full spectrum of information and care that's available to them, including the counseling and prenatal care um, information that they can get from these crisis pregnancy resource clinics, information on adoption for those that maybe want to choose that as, as an option. Um, should we provide these same clinics who are before us today saying that we should support this bill to do the same thing and use their speech to talk about a woman's friend in Yuba City uh, or any of these other clinics that provide resources to women as well? So what I would say to that is uh, the providers that we're talking about, uh, many of them actually do offer the full spectrum of healthcare services. Uh, in fact, uh, the types of clinics that I think you would suggest ought to uh, provide conversations around uh, prenatal care and, and caring, uh, a, 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 a caring uh, to full term. Um, that is already provided by uh, by the clinics that we're talking about. So I actually don't think that would be necessary. But what I do want to be clear is there's nothing in this bill that requires any referrals to abortion clinics that provides any sort of preferences of one kind of clinic over another. Uh, it's a simple notice that uh, there are free or low-cost public programs uh, reflecting really the range of care uh, that is, is out there. And let me also just mention... Uh, that the Fourth Circuit, as you probably know in the Centro Tapia case, uh, also upheld uh, similar language to what we're talking about here, again reiterating a compelling interest, again reiterating that the notices that we're talking about were narrowly tailored, uh, and, uh, and similar language, again, held constitutional. But again, if the, if the objective is to provide the full range of services, because there are a lot of primary care clinics that don't provide the information that we just talked about, they're geared up to do, to do certain things, but they don't provide information on adoption. They don't provide information on uh, different prenatal care. Um, they're just not geared up to do that. So should those facilities that don't offer those services be provided to, to give information about, hey, there are other clinics that are available in the community? If we're going to provide the full range of options, which I agree with you, then should we not be doing that? I, I would imagine that if you did do that, maybe you wouldn't have the support for your bill. Uh, again, I, I think I would disagree. I think I would disagree with the premise. Can I ask the, the audience premise. to please refrain from interrupting or disrupting? I think I would disagree with the premise of what you're suggesting. The clinics that we're talking about do provide the full range. Uh, in fact, I'd be happy to defer to one of our witnesses today to talk about that. Thank you. Um, so one of the, what we're trying to achieve with this bill is actually a standard of care so that women who are pregnant and seeking services for their pregnancy-related counseling, so if you break your leg and you go to a primary care person, you don't need information about pregnancy. Um, what we're trying to do with this bill is make sure that the standard of care is met for every pregnant woman seeking information about contraception, prenatal care on having a baby, adoption, or abortion care. So this bill is only bringing everybody up to the same standard because what we have found is that not every pregnancy counseling center offers that. This bill specifically says that if you're already enrolled in FPACT and Medi-Cal provider, you're already required by law to disclose this information. So this is bringing that level of care to everyone seeking care regarding or information regarding pregnancy. So if that's true, why doesn't your notice say adoption? in it. Free or low cost access to comprehensive family planning services, prenatal care, adoption, counseling. I don't see any of those services listed in your notice. Although I understand what you're saying about providing all the options, I don't believe that adoption is included as a medical service. No, but it might be something that people who are trying to get 
information on different options that are available? How would I go about doing an adoption if I wanted to do right. that? Is there? And if I'm allowed to answer, like was stated, that if you are able to take Medi-Cal reimbursements, that is part of the requirement of those clinics, which, as you said, is the reason that some of these notices to make an even level playing field, even in the private clinics, is necessary. Is there a requirement under Medi-Cal that they provide information about the crisis resource clinics that are in their community? No. So that, that's what I'm saying is you have an uneven playing field here. You're saying that these privates who receive no funding, no government funding whatsoever, they're completely private, have to tell about the government funded programs that are out there. But the same is not true of the government programs. They don't have to say that, hey, there's these other groups out here who have qualified, licensed people providing the information. They don't have to tell about these privates. That's where I think we're going to have a huge constitutional issue. I think part of the issue is that right now a California clinic that is licensed and receiving Medi-Cal cannot refer to a, a clinic that is not providing the full range of services. Okay, but you want the privates to tell about that public, though, see? <laughs> It's well, uneven. I just, it's, it's a constitutional right for me to understand all of my rights. And so, as a woman and as a mother, yes, I'm asking that when anyone enters a clinic, that they be provided with all the information, not necessarily all the services, but all the information. And I agree, and I think all these, you know, hundreds of women who are here today would agree with you that you should be provided with all the information. There's also a constitutional free speech right at issue, and that's what I'm concerned about as a member of the Judiciary Committee. And like we said, I think we all agree, we're just trying to create a, a standard of care that is an equal playing field for all of us. And how we get there, we, you know, we'll work together to get there. But it should be a standard, a standard level of care for all. All right, last question, I promise. Um, if I were to bring a bill before this committee based on a report from a pro-life organization that had done investigations um, in some of the public clinics uh, around the state, let's say it's let's say it's focused on the family, uh, James Dobson's organization, that did an investigation and found out there was misinformation being given in these public clinics, uh, that they weren't you know doing things correctly, and then I had the same bill, on the flip side saying hey they have to tell about that these public clinics have to tell uh, about the private clinics and that you know, that they offer services uh, to women as well. Would you support that, Bill? Because that's what you're asking me to do. Right. S so if there was such a report, I certainly would take a look at it. Uh, I, would be happy, <laughs> would I would be happy to have a conversation with you about it. And if it turned out that the facts in that report were true, I would be troubled. Uh, and, and I would be happy to work with you on how we would uh, address factual inaccuracies. But on the flip side of that, what we do know uh, is that, again, 91% of the clinics that we are talking about, uh, women who walk into these clinics are told that there are direct links between abortion and breast cancer, between abortion and infertility, between abortion and suicide, between abortion and mental illness. And, and really, what we are doing with this law, it's a very narrowly tailored policy to address the compelling government interest of ensuring that all pregnant women are notified about their full spectrum of health care options without referring to specific abortion clinics, without suggesting that one clinic is better than another. But you can see why I'm a little bit dubious of that report, right? Because this is from NARAL, whose their full focus is on abortion rights, correct? That's their so it's their report. If I came to you with the same report that said 91% of public clinics are doing something wrong and it came from focus on the family, let's be honest, man. Would you, have, would you be dubious of that report? Would you accept that as completely true? Or would you say, hey, there's a bias here. There's an inherent bias because both of these groups are ideologically focused on, on an issue. I would be happy to, again, uh, take that report as seriously as I do any other. I looked at the fact, fact base and, uh, and talk with you about how we address it. But I'd like to defer to uh, Assemblywoman Burke. Well, and, and for the sake of argument, that, that is a hypothetical. That is not a bill that is before us. And if <laughs> well, any member did present that bill, it would get the full analysis that this bill got as well. 
So I, I want to caution everybody from going too far down a hypothetical trend. Not a hypothetical. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, mine is not a hypothetical. So I have actually had the experience. I was not even going to a clinic for an abortion, and I was given a tremendous amount of misinformation. So for me, the reason I'm a part of this bill is because it's my personal experience. It's not from the report. So I just want to make that very clear, that, that I have personally received information that I found not factual or that was not factual. So I just want to make sure that that is clear. Okay. All right. I do have a comment later, but I'll have <laughs> make, a com make a comment. Go ahead. Well, are we waiting until everybody has questions? Or? Well, I have Mr. Wagner, but I don't have anybody else yet. All right, Mr. Wagner. <clears throat> um, thank you, uh, Mr. Gallagher. Stole uh, most of my thunder, at least on the legal side of things, and uh, and I appreciate that line of questioning. I guess I would, uh, um, you know. T to be honest, we all know what uh, what this bill is about. Um, it's about abortion and the word abortion that appears four times in this bill. Um, I don't think it's narrowly drafted. Um, I do think there's a very easy alternative that would satisfy the hundred or so people who testified in opposition to this bill and the thousands and maybe tens of thousands of, uh, of our fellow citizens that they were representing and that frankly we're here to represent as well um, and that would be to strike the word abortion where it appears in this bill uh, then it probably sails out of here all of these people thank you and they go back about uh, about their daily lives um, I guess I'll just ask would you be willing to take that friendly amendment as you know, under Roe v. Wade, uh, a woman's right to choose is the constitutional right of all women in our country. And, and uh, again, our bill is very narrow. It simply says that licensed facilities provide a simple notice of the range of care, prenatal care, family planning services, as well as abortion services. And it also says that unlicensed facilities, uh, if uh, they are unlicensed facilities, need to disclose that there are not, uh, right. that there are unlicensed and they don't have licensed medical providers on staff. Again, I think it's very narrowly tailored. I appreciate, again, the difference uh, that we have colleagues uh, on this issue of choice. Uh, and I would just respectfully suggest that we may have a difference that may be difficult for us to resolve in this bill. That's a, that's a no to that friendly amendment. That would be a no. All right, thanks. Um, all right, so let me talk for just a minute about, about the, I'll use your phrase, the heartfelt perspectives that we heard from the opposition. Um, thank you for recognizing that indeed those were heartfelt, because uh, I think they were. What I fail to see in this bill, unfortunately, is an appreciation of those heartfelt perspectives. This bill is bringing to the legislature and asking us to use the very heavy hand of government to force private citizens, our constituents, to violate their conscience, to, to speak on behalf of the government and offer to somebody something that in some cases, in all cases, violates their conscience, in their opinion, whether they're right or wrong, whether it would violate your conscience or mine doesn't matter, it violates theirs. Um, some of the, the, the Catholic folks were, that were here testifying um, believe heartfelt maybe wrong, maybe not your theology, maybe not mine, that, that something like this forces them to close their doors or, or quite possibly um, violate their religion, uh, consign them to hell if you want to go that far. Um, how can we in good conscience as a government force that on our citizens? When, when, in 2015, the idea that a pregnant woman in the state of California would be unaware that adoptions out, uh, abortions out there and, and, and perhaps an option um, just boggles the mind. <laughs> How can we, as a government, force our citizens to violate their conscience? And isn't that exactly what the First Amendment says we can't do 
shouldn't do, and frankly, aren't true to our oath of office if we try to do. Again, the suggestion that there's anything in this bill that would prevent a center from providing the services that they're currently providing is just not true. Uh, there's nothing in this bill that forces any of these clinics to close their doors, that, prevent, that requires the clinics uh, to, to not engage in uh, whatever they're engaged in at this point. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's a simple notice requirement that's two, three lines long. Uh, it simply says that there are free or low-cost public programs uh, for a pregnant woman to avail herself of the spectrum of choices that, that she faces. It doesn't matter how long or short the notice is. It doesn't matter how simple it is. It doesn't matter that it talks about a, something that it, the Supreme Court has told us is a constitutional right. Um, it violates the conscience of citizens who who have given you their heartfelt perspective to use to use your your phrase simple or not use small words use big words that's not the point the point is they are telling people in violation of their conscience that there is this procedure available that they rightly or wrongly believe results in the death of an innocent human being how can we whether we write a simple notice, don't tell me it's a simple notice. Don't tell me it's two lines long. I can read it. How can we in good conscience foist that on our constituents who believe like they do that abortion is wrong? Again, I think this is just an issue that we will respectfully disagree on, although I do want to mention uh, we do know that there are uh, many women in our state who, when they're pregnant, may not know exactly what their options are. Uh, certainly within immigrant communities, certainly within low-income communities, uh, and when they see the ad, pregnant, scared, and they walk into a center, and again, they're told that an abortion will lead to all sorts of horrific things, um, it creates a number of challenges for, for government as we think about how to protect uh, a woman's constitutional right to choose. So. Again, respectfully disagree. We may not be able to agree on this one, but, uh, uh, but uh, we, we, we have certainly uh, done our best to narrowly tailor this to address a substantial government interest. All right, last question. Why is abortion so important to you people that you will require a violation of conscience? You won't put in adoption. When you say well, we want the whole range, but you won't put in some of those that you, that you Stand up here and tell us something that is patently not true, that there are people out there in California in 2015 that don't know abortion is available. What is it about that procedure that's so important to you? 